you'll remember from year one that you will have used the first derivative to talk about properties of graphs. Yep. You then you would have used the second derivative to discuss whether a stationary point was a maximum or a minimum. And so we're going to be going and now trying to add some more detail into what the second derivative is actually for. So this is a particular curve that I've got here. I'm not going to name what the curve actually is. Um, I'm just thinking of it as like a kind of cubic looking curve. And this first bit that we've got here, this is where it is concave when the second derivative is less than zero. And I'm going to explain about what that's actually meaning here. We say that the curve is concave when it is swerving right. What I mean by this is if you imagine that this was like a bird's eye view of a, of a road, so it's a plan view of a road, and you were driving in a car like this, as the curve is bending around in this direction, you will have turned the steering wheel to the right. Okay. This section that we've got here, which we call a convex section, your steering wheel would have been turned to the left. And this dot that is right in the middle, what can you tell me about the steering wheel as the dot in the middle? The steering wheel would be like completely straight at that point. So that's one of the ways that we think about what it means when it is swerving to the right or swerving to the left. So if something is concave, it is swerving to the right. In other words, the steering wheel is going to the right. This bit in the middle I'll talk about in more detail in a second is called a point of inflection. That's where the steering wheel is completely straight. And then this section that we've got here is where the steering wheel has been turned to the left, even just a little bit, so it's swerving to the left. It's like a bird's eye view of a road that we've got here. Now, the reason that the second derivative is less than or equal to zero, some definitions say that it is less than zero, some say less than or equal to. Don't worry about whether it's got the equal to or not sign. It's not very important. Is because the gradient here is always decreasing. And the second derivative is telling you how the gradient is changing. Let's just think about why that's true. The gradient function is telling you how the y values are changing. The gradient of the gradient is telling you how the gradient is changing. So if you just think about what this looks like here, we've got quite a steep positive gradient. Over here, it's still a positive gradient, but it's not very steep. We've then got a zero gradient not a very steep negative gradient, and then a more negative gradient that we've got there. So what's happened is we've gone from something positive to zero to negative. In other words, the gradient, the change of the gradient is negative. And we know that when the second derivative is less than zero, it corresponds to a, a local maximum, which kind of helps us to remember that this is going to be like a maximum point that's at the top of it. So this section is called a concave section. Genuinely, the reason that I remember this as a cave is what my students saw me doing last year, is I think of this cubic, and there's two ways of doing it. One of them is that when it's in this cubic order that's like this, this is concave, and this one is convex. If it looks like this diagram, they're in alphabetical order. But the way I actually remember it is I imagine that this is like a little cave with like a pathway to the cave, like on a hill. This is actually how my mind works for it. And then convex is the other one that's kind of got like that V shape of something like convex. However you want to remember it, you need to make sure that these are things that you've remembered the difference between concave and convex. But I'm going to leave that cave drawing there because I quite like it. So this point in the middle, it says at the point of inflection, the gradient is not changing. In other words, the gradient of the gradient is 0, meaning that it's just at that point, it's not bending to the left or bending to the right. The steering wheel is completely straight. So I've said, note that points of inflection, as with this example, are not necessarily stationary points. So let's just think about what that says. Just because the second derivative is 0, that does not mean that the gradient is 0. The second derivative can be 0, even if the first derivative is not 0. They don't both have to be 0 at the same time. Then last of all, in this region, the gradient, although it's initially a negative gradient, like here it's quite negative, it then goes zero, positive, and then much more steeply positive. The gradient is increasing, which means that the second derivative, the rate of change of the gradient, is positive. Um, so it is convex, and I've printed this wrong. It should say when it is greater than or equal to zero. Please, please, please make sure that you've changed that on your booklet, because it's saying that it is 
increasing. So it should have been greater than or equal to zero. They both said the same thing. So that would have not been good if you learned that the wrong way around. So that's what it means to be concave or convex. You can either think about it the alphabetical order when you've got a cubic, concave, convex, or you can think of a nice little cave in a hillside um, for that sort of uh, N kind of shape, and then the convex for this V or sort of U shape that we've got here. And I want to connect this back to what we did in year one, or what you did in year one with Mr. Udin about differentiation, okay? So on this next page that we've got here, I want to think about all of the different features that we have of a graph. And you'll notice that what I've done is I have taken the same f of x. I haven't named what this f of x actually is. And I'm investigating f of x, f dash of x, and f double dash of x. In other words, I'm investigating the first, sorry, the function, the first derivative, and the second derivative that I've got here. And I'm going to highlight the different features of the graph that it corresponds to. So first of all, that one doesn't seem to have its uh, axis line drawn in it. So let me just, you've got it on your printed one. It's just on the board. It hasn't shown up. So this first thing says, the function is above the axis when f of x is greater than 0. In other words, I'm talking about this section and this section. That's when the function is greater than 0. The function is on the axis when f of x is equal to 0. So I'm talking about those three points that I've got there. And then the last one, for f of x being less than 0, we're referring to any parts of the graph that are below the axis. This is all a recap of things that we know already. We're just going to be adding in this new part on the bottom row. It then says that the function is increasing when the first derivative is greater than 0. So if the function is increasing, an increasing function has got a positive gradient. So this section here has got a positive gradient, but this has got a negative gradient. And then this bit here has got a positive gradient. That's what it means for it to be an increasing function. What am I going to be doing for the next one where it says f dash x equals 0? The function is stationary. Where am I going to be highlighting? The turning points. Good. So it's just going to be here and here. Notice how it's different to what it was in this one. Okay? This is when it was on the axis. This is when the gradient is 0. And now I'm going to say that the function is decreasing. Well, the only place where it's going downhill is that section, where f dash x is less than 0. And so now we're going to go to the new part that we've got here. So convex is when it is greater than or equal to 0. And we know that convex is like the V part of the, the diagram that we've got here. Now, the V part is from here, all of that bit. If you imagine the steering wheel that you were driving that car, all of that section, your steering wheel would be turned to the left. Okay, And turning to the left, you'll need to memorize is corresponding to convex. Where is the point of inflection in this graph? Again, it's kind of a bit difficult to see the axis, but we know the axis is like here and here. Where is it, sorry? It's like this bit here. If you imagine where you were driving that car, it's where it is, your wheel is completely straight. And then the last part for it being concave, it is all of this bit up to, but not including, well, it could include the point of inflection. So that's the full amount of stuff that we need to know about how you describe functions. You need to know from year one the stuff that's in the yellow highlight, you need to know about where it is relative to the axis. You also need to know about what it means to be an increasing or a decreasing function. They love to say, when is f of x an increasing function? And people forget that it means to differentiate. And now they can ask you about whether something is convex or concave, or they can ask you about a point of inflection. So what I'm going to want you to do now, using a highlighter or a pen or whatever you want to do as a kind of of how you can do this, is I want you to indicate on these diagrams, the same three diagrams that you've got here, I want you to do what we've just done on that previous page. So I want you to do for f of x, for f dash of x, and for f double dash x, for these ones. You're then going to do the same on this kind of strange graph that I've come up with here. And I think I've just done that twice for you. Yeah. So you're just going to have a go at those ones, and then we'll go through those together in a couple of minutes, OK?